Welcome James, um, good to hear you here. Tell um, us your name and where you're from. I'm James Sutherland, come from Cairnbog, 3A Mid Street, Cairnbog. 3A Mid Street. How old will you be on your next birthday, James? I'll be 88 in November. 88, you're doing well. So James, um, a lot of the time we, we, we start right a while we, we early life, but let's speak about things up to date. You've um, you suffer from Parkinson's disease, as, as quite a lot of folk in, in our community do, and you've been up for, for some time. Okay. Maria, your wife's been diagnosed as well. Let us know how life has been, you know, how well, long has it been? Thirteen years ago I was diagnosed really? with the Parkinson's. Aye. And it's, it's gradually gotten worse, a bit Aye. slow. Aye. You didn't realise it's really on you, it's so slow, catching up. Uh -huh. Then I think just two years ago, my wife Marie was diagnosed with it. Aye. You've had some good treatment though, and you're doing, you're doing really well with it for him. Well, that, I think I'm doing all right, because they've changed the pills a few times, like. Aye. And they've given me their in just now. And uh, it's tried to stop the shocks, but they can't stop it. <laughs> they still sometimes come back. So you're selling Marie Beth going through it together. We're going through it together. She's a different type of Parkinson's than me. Aye. We're the same consultant, but we're on different medication. Yes. So, challenging. Um, but you've had a lot of challenges in your life. And uh, in the almost eight, eight years, or so many things have happened. But we're just going to look at some of the main moments in your life today. And I believe it's going to really inspire a lot of people um, uh, as we go through some of the some of the, the main events, let's say. Mm -hmm. So, you said, born 3 Image Street, Cairn Bog, 1934. Tell us a little bit, bit for your mind about your early life, your, your family, your, the, being brought up in Belgar and in, in, in the villages at that time, just a four and, and going up to the wharf. What was it like uh, back then? Well, before I went to school, I kind of mind much. I have a poor memory to best. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, after that, it was, uh, there was no electric, so it was in darkness we bed. But I uh, still enjoyed ourselves. The police came around at night and checked other houses to see if there was a PPA light looking out. Is that so that the planes would not see the so lights in the so the planes couldn't see any light. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was b b b beside the sea, so I enjoyed myself going down the rocks. Aye. As I grew up, I, I like it to get doing it with a clip and try and get a pot and a rocket lobster. Aye. And did you get some? Not much, but I did go to some. Do you eat them or would you sell them on? No, I'd eat them. You'd eat them, aye. aye. So you want to start in a business early? A bit, a bit early for out of the business. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for about a school and for about, uh, for do you, for your memories of that? Well, the memories is, we stayed on in Cairnbog at the school after they come out of age. Mm -hmm. We didn't need to go to the academy unless she was full of brains and wanted to be a... <laughs> which I was not. <laughs> so you've been in you've So been I've been doing until I was 15, then served my apprenticeship. Right. Then about um, faith is, is been something that's been key in your life for a long, long time. Um, so fit, fits your earliest memories of, I suppose, church, Sunday school, that kind of things in the village back then? I went to Sunday school. I would say the first Sunday school that I went to was the Salvation Army. And they were pretty big in Cairnbog mm -hmm. at that aye, time. Aye. Then uh, the meeting started when all in Benson came. That was the assembly, the, the, the assembly uh, meeting, inception uh, assembly of the, the AOG, the assembly here. Aye. So at that we've got in the in the history books is that was 1945 that it started in Cairn Bog. So, well, I think it was 46 that I gave my life to the Lord. Well, on to the end of the, the year. Aye. I think it was the 28th of November, in November, October. In 1946. I think it was then. 
So did your folks go to the to the assembly hall when it started in, in Belga then? Aye, they both went to the assembly and they took me to Sunday school there. Aye. Tell us a bit about your 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 mother and father then. Well my mother's for Gamery. Mm -hmm. She was brought up in the close meeting. That was Maggie. Maggie. She was off a straight and off a strict with me, but which was good. Aye. My father he was came for Easter Rose. They called him Hilton on he came for the village of Hilton. Right. His mother died when he was eight years old. Mm -hmm. And he was brought down to his, his sister was married in, in Verulaki. And she brought him up. She brought him up. So he was Hilton Andra. Called him Hilton Andra. And he was great tall and Muggy was small. My mother was very small. She was uh, four feet ten. <laughs> And my father was away a six feet there, right heel in there. Aye. So they, they went there, and, and was, it, was it your father that came to Lord first? And I'm not sure. I think it was my mother. Aye. Then uh, it led to my father's faith. Aye. But he, he became enough a strong Christian. Yes. And that was really early on in the, early in the start on of in, the in assembly. Early. He was not a speaker, but he did a door, rather than a doorkeeper. So, fit about yourself then, how did that come about, your, your journey of faith? How did you mark that decision to follow the Lord in 1946? So, 11, around about 11? For 11 years old. You're all almost 12, so how did that happen? Well, I was going to Sunday school, which is all I got there. Aye. Was it, uh, Superintendent, George nice man, his father. Christian, good Christian man. Is that George's father? George's father. Aye, and, aye. and he left enough influence in my life, along with Tom Beckett, the pastor. So Tom Beckett was the pastor that came? He was the pastor then. Mm -hmm. And the original hall, the hall that's here in Cairnball, which was a wooden hall that was there first. Aye, that was a stick hall. Was and I will remember the prayer that I prayed. Uh -huh. It was funny that I forgot about it till you were preaching one day, just not long ago, and it came into my head. Aye. Come into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. A simple child prayer. Aye. I think I prayed that as well. A good bit after 1946, a Aye. good bit when I got saved. Hey, um, it wasn't just yourself, was it? There was a bit of a, a, a famous five at the time. Well, I'm not sure the right order was. I think Andrew Corner was the first, but I may be wrong. Well, hearing that Andrew was the first team to make a decision, Andrew Corner. Aye. False. I'd say it's funny the he married Barry, which we, I used to sing with Barry, uh -huh. and my sons married a great grandchild. Aye. James married Bob Ryan. Aye. So Andra, Andra gave his life to the Lord. John Sam Strachan. I th think he would have been second. Aye. And he went on to do some things, didn't he? He was a missionary <laughs> in Afghanistan. Aye. Come home for there and took up the pastorate in Baruch. Yes. He was well liked. He left a good foundation in the Baruch. 16 years, I think, he was a pastor here. Or maybe I'm not sure at the time. Mm -hmm. But after that, he went to Aberdeen. Yes. Five ladies. <laughs> it's, in the, it's funny, his, his daughter married the pastor, Ian Duthie. Aye. And it's the biggest church in Scotland, I think. Aye. That's it's, now. That's now. But it, the it, journey for just a handful that They have moved out to the, ex, the old exhibition centre. And uh, I think they get up for anything for a thousand to two thousand people. Yeah, John Strachan coming through that journey and starting off with just a, a handful of other ladies uh, to fit it is now. That in itself is, is an incredible story. So that's only, well, if we're putting him in number two in the, in the five, and it's all around about the same time. Was it within a, a week or two of each other that you saw? Uh, within months, I would say. Okay, so then there was another. Another John Tate. John John, John Tate. In fact, there's two John Tates. There was Brina's John, Margaret's John. That's and right. John. Well, there's Elsie's John. Elsie's John. He, he became a pastor as well. He died a year ago. 
Yes. But he became a pastor, but he did a lot of mission work in South Africa. Aye. He did. Um, we had manual press. And manual press, that's right. And uh, he was well, I well loved and respected in Africa. And here, um, his service was pretty special last year. And uh, so some, some line-up, but I would have been, a, if, I mean, in football terms, it would have been a great five-a-side team, but in spiritual terms, um, yes, giants, really. So, and then yourself. Well, um, I, was, I was privileged when John died to sing at his funeral, which I thought did a very big funeral, privilege. Aye. But, you, but it was your ministry. Um, some of them went in to speak in and, and lead in and different things. Uh, churches, but at a very early age, you had the voice and you used that for the Lord. You you were singing and serving the Lord at an early age. So tell us a bit about that. And James saved 11 going on 12, but it wasn't that too long after that you were leading the choruses and leading the worship. I was at, leading uh, the worship singing. At the which services. Is, choruses, we got them, the angels are different. Aye. We are organ with it. You, you, you go to wind for your feet, you go on the pedals. Aye. And uh, I was about 13 years old when I started out. And then I started for a violin corner singing together. She would follow music and play the piano accordion and piano. And uh, we sung at most of the conferences around the area. So, um, at for, for age 13, you, you would have been up for years. And, would you, and, and just how, for example, like, because, cause, you know, life seems to be so busy now and it's, it's difficult for folk to mark things, but how many times on a Sunday, for example, or on a weekend, would you have been singing in at meetings and services? I'm not sure how often we sung, but we sung at different kirks as well, actually. Aye. Uh, and we sung till she, was, uh, she went away to be a nurse doing the Glasgow. Is this Violet? And Violet. Aye. She was full of music. Aye. And uh, then uh, I started singing my body after that. My body, aye. And uh, so, but on a Sunday, for example, was it morning and night? Was it? Was it, we were, it was morning, they had a prayer meeting at 8 o'clock in the morning, aye. which most folk did. Then we had this, the Brock and the Breed at 11. Yeah. Then Sunday school in the afternoon. Yep. Then the gospel at six at night. <laughs> but once we was established as young boys, we started a me extra meeting again after the gospel at night. Aye. Or went to some of the houses of the Christians. So the the do you remember the Brock meeting starting as well? That was nineteen forty six when when you got saved. The, I, I mean in the Brock meeting, but I can't tell you exactly when it started. But it was a Sunlight Hall in Cross Street. Right. Then it went to Charlie Street Lane. I was to open in a meeting there. I don't remember not. Aye. Chuck Gibson was a pastor then. Fernie was a pastor for a start. Yep. No, I can't mind who was there after that. Aye. But uh, amazing days, really. But just getting off the off the ground when you see if it's happened new. But. Um, well, we went in the Brock meeting on Friday night to get in the, the train and then come back in the train at night. So it was extra meeting was going down. An extra meeting as well. But what were some of the the songs of the day that you mind kind of singing first, kind that, that really would have meant a lot to you back then? Well, one of them was Violet Carnet was song, which still sticks with me. Uh, in him again, uh, the potter, place your hand in the potter, he controls your life, Lord. Aye. I can't mind if I start to it. You'd mind it if you start singing it? <laughs> <laughs> Probably go singing out mine. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. And um, my body, it was the back of the clouds, the sun is always shining. And just keep on praying till the light breaks through. So James, so you're in your teens, you're serving the Lord, you're, you're singing for him, you're, you know, going to the, the meetings and starting the youth meetings as well. Um, so fun, fun do you leave school? You leave school at 15, 
Well done, did you go and work after that? I left school at 15. Fortunately, uh, I managed to get a job. I was wanting to be a joiner. Aye. But I couldn't get a job. And George McLean was married to my cousin, Violet, uh -huh. Sutherland. And he had a share with Tommy Summers in the boatyard. And he got a job to me, Tommy which Summer. I was very thankful for. Very good. And you served your apprenticeship there? I served my apprenticeship there, but then hit the National Service. National Service after that. So, yes, so you went to the Army, and that was doing in Didcot, was it? No. I had to go, the way it worked out was, I was a board builder and they put me into the medical corps. Okay, aye. And uh, when I arrived at the medical corps, John Strachan had just left, went to Ireland. The education ser the sergeant was a Christian. He wrote a letter to meet me, so it helped me a lot to start. Then I was posted to Wheatley near Oxford and went to work in the hospital there and train as a nurse. After you gave your life to the Lord, I think he was 13 year old, and as the boy he's did in Belga, he was up to some hell. Well, enough and, a good climber. You and the boys, and I kind of was all the Beckett's boys, but were up. Uh, well, you were a good climber, so let us tell, tell us what happened next. Well, we just going away to hit an open air with Dorothy Roy and, and, a, and a few of them up in holidays in the summer. And was climbing, so I decided, we decided to climb. It was John Tate's short, but he was now a good climber. So I took his turn. But when I put my hand above the insulator, it was a leak. Mm -hmm. And I was got a full blast of electricity through me. Oh, the bolts going through you. And it shook me like a doll. And I can't remember no more till I wakened up. A few oh, you days were just up. hanging on, I was, getting electrocuted, and you just go. passed out. Aye. Aye. Well, by accounts, you fell off the, the it was wire. 20 or 25 feet, I just didn't know you were. Aye, high up. And then was in a coma for... For a day or two. Within a kind of long, really. And uh, they didn't think there was any chance, did they? And that, that well, the doctor a... came out and told my mother, he says, I, I, I'm surprised that this child is still alive. Aye. He says, I should be writing his death certificate with the amount of literacy went through him. Yep. And then... There so was my mother told them, he says, the reason he's alive, they prayed for him all over Britain. Aye, they've sent telegraphs right over, and he says, that's the reason he's still alive. And there was a call to play, I not right across the country. And, and then um, they called me, I'm the miracle boy, that thing. Oh, it was in the paper, wasn't it? The miracle boy. I'm not sure about the paper, like, but uh, again, everybody called me the miracle boy. So it was a real miracle that I was alive. Aye. And so do you remember waking up for that? Well, there's one instance when I was waking up. David Gardner's mother, Gilbertina. Gilbertina, aye. And I, I always loved her. I loved her before, but I loved her more. I gave her, she was stroking my head and telling aye. me I'm going to be fine. But so she was reassuring me. Aye. Gilbertina. Characters, eh? Um, so what was the first miracle? It was a first miracle. Um, there was always, I've got to say this, that uh, you was in the medical corps, and there was always a story in our family that you gave us in walking about the Bobby Charlton story. So, fit weekend was that there was a big game of football in the army game. That's right. Um, was that at Didcot, or was, was that... How was it Didcot? That was at Didcot. And there was a big... So, uh, excitement because Bobby Charlton was playing and obviously folk must have kind of amount of time he must be doing his national service and you were his physio uh, you were the physio in the game so we always kind of a story and uh, it was kind of famous within the family but then for your 80th birthday we went down to Old Trafford and we kind of right. did our best to contact and see if so Bobby was going to be there that day because we wanted to to meet. And then I got all nervous. One, one would we get a hold of him, which was really, really difficult. Um, but two, would he remember or, or would he never care about it? And, and there was other things about the story that we, did, we thought it must be true, but how did folk can 
far more be talking was if he was in the army. Anyway. Well, which Hartman was, uh, I was shifted from my hospital. The, 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 the matron and the colonel come in to see me just before that and asked me to sign on. And they get promotion and they put me through my ASRN. Aye. And I said, no, thank you. They were nice to me, they didn't try to bully me. They said, answer, tell us something on why have you been working so well in the hospital? And uh, I said, well, I, said, I made up my mind, if I work hard, time will pass. If I sky, it'll be a long two years. <laughs> so th two or three weeks after that, I got to reward it and posted down to it good, which was just, was a sky then, as you would aye, say. Aye. And uh, the doctor shouts us, there's a big game, private Sutherland. Uh, he was Irish, he, he, he was enough a nice man. He says, uh, you get doing to be the, the first aid man if anything happens to them. Yep. I said, thank goodness if nothing happened. Aye. But I didn't realise that Bobby Charlton, until the girl started shouting, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Aye. And then I realised, I said, I hope nothing happens here. <laughs> and uh, after that, well, the, obviously, they did go to one. But I didn't realise that he was posted at that time. He was posted in Ditchcourt and all. Right. Same comp as me. So, cut again to Old Trafford a few years ago. And uh, we eventually, somehow, by way of miracle, did get to be there right in front of him. And we say, introduce Sir Bobby. I says, father-in-law James, He's, he was in the army at the same time as you. And then you says, I was at Didcot. And he says, oh, I was at Didcot. And then it was like two long lost friends speaking. And I think hopefully we'll hear a picture of that on the, on the screen. But I just thought, well, I had to mention the Bobby Charlton story, sorry. Um, but you, uh, what I found interesting about that time, you know, James, is that you went to, if I mind right, uh, an assembly down there in Oxford, run about there, so, somewhere like that, that area. And you would still gang and lead and sing in our region. What was the Elam in Oh, was Elam? Oxford, the Elam Church oh, me, it wasn't the assembly, it was the no, Elam. There was no assembly there. Well, we'll forgive you for that, you know. Right. <laughs> but so, they accepted me well, but when I was singing, they used aye. to laugh. It's joke the card, you being Scottish. Aye, aye. This is, uh, we, we do, we have difficulty knowing what he says sometimes when he's speaking. <laughs> but when he sings, he says it's perfect English. <laughs> <laughs> so you so when you sung, they understood you. Ah. And then, okay, coming back for the, for the, for the army, for, the, for your national service, back into Tommy Summers for a while. Mm -hmm, that's right. And how long was that? And then for the Hartman lift I got back for a year to Tommy Summers, then I got away to sea. Uh -huh. And the tea rows with uh, Charlie Duthie and Bill Duthie. Okay, you went away with them, aye. And then, obviously, around about that time, you, you started going with Mary. And then that blossomed and you, and you got married. What, what year was that and you got married? We got married in 19, 9th of John, uh, um, December, 1951. 9th of December. So, um, and then started a family. But you came away for the, the fishing, didn't you? I was away for the fishing and started working the shore. Aye. And... and and what did you do then? Was it? I got back to joinery, mm -hmm. and we bought a small building. To, to do it yourself, kind of work. A DIY shop. So, yeah. what was the name of the shop? James Sutherland. James Sutherland. <laughs> Very good. And that was it. Was that in High Street? High Street. Aye. So you did that, and then. We got word of going to, get a way to make more fortune in South Africa. South Africa. A big step to take. A big take. step, but it didn't work out. So taking away a young family, so was it just Andrew and Graham at a time, or? Just uh, Andrew and Graham, it's the only family we had. Aye, and, and that was in... And was we it? was going away to fish it just in the corner. Aye, so what a, a, what a, new, a new venture over there. Completely. It was a big move to Mark, and that was 1970, was it? 1970. Aye. So, wow, that's a, that, was, that was a bold step. So... So for what happened over, over there then? Well, with permission for the government to leave, but there's a lot of corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we went there, 
never come to their soul rights. And we couldn't get fished. Couldn't get fished. We did try to set up a company with the Tristanians, but in the way out, we lost our partner boat. She sunk. Mm. We lost her. And we don't know what happened if she capsized. It was, not, it was a bad night, but it was not a storm. Mm. And the venture was a failure. Failure. And that was with your brother in law, Andrew. My brother in law, Andrew. So. We set us both, uh, both back and were. Aye, so you'd emigrated, you'd went out and been in Cape Town with the families. Mind you, made some good relationships here that you've still got to this day. Uh, well, we, Maybe they'll be watching. But next to our neighbour, they become Christians and their families are all Christians. Yep. But I always remember going to the fish hook, the Baptist church, and uh, this voice shouts over, you're Scottish, a young girl, 15 years old. And uh, she says, would you like to go up and meet my mum and dad? Get a cup of tea with them. We oh, certainly needing friends anyway, but Aye. we went away up not knowing it was a Bible college we were going to wait till. Aye. He was principal of the Bible college. He came for Sky. Oh. And she, his, his wife was English. She's still alive. She lives up in Inverness now. Who was their names? Margaret. She's been to this church a few times, Margaret. In the, in the mine? He, Mordo, and Mordo, George I Strachan was here. Okay, he preached yeah. one of the Sundays here when George right. Strachan was pastor. But the, but the other friends that you made worth mentioning is Malcolm and Malcolm and Heather, and Heather aye. which were still friends and yes. hoping to meet them shortly. We we're going for a holiday in, in November. Oh, yeah. Or there or some or Cape they... Town. Oh, wow. And we're going up the noise now and they're flying down to meet us. Oh, I never can. It's good to get and go their, <laughs> their uh, families are Christians as well. They were. Aye, brilliant. So that was that was that was a, some great things came out with. Even though like the the business venture, it was a it, as you're saying yourself well, in your own words, it, it the, failed. The thing it worry me is always thankful for. People would not think you say maybe the same as we we was glad after it was a failure, mm. because it would have been multi millionaires in a short time and not then. But God knew we couldn't handle it. Yep. So now you grow up and you handle things better. Yep. So coming back for that, I remember you telling me it was humbling coming back again because everybody owed the white mark of fortune. Coming back in, it had no work to it. You came from small communities like everybody can. I suppose you're coming up to your late thirties, forty. We, we still have family to, to support, and you've got nothing. So what happened, where did you go when you came back to this country, to this community? Well, I did a wee bit of a joint in if I leave, but mm -hmm. I went back to sea. Aye, went to fishing. And, uh, then we decided to start something else. Mm -hmm. But the last person I was to see, he was a nice, a really nice Christian, Billy Jock. Oh, Billy. He died last year. Oh well, and my, my second son, he he went off a wee. I mean, he loved he loved aye, Billy. Aye. Oh, he he gets a lot of mistakes, Billy. So, um, see, see, um, finding Mary start up the bed and breakfast as well. Was that early seven, when you came back? Then, when we came back, she started doing it. We bought aye, a house, aye. a big house in Grant Place. And she was doing a lot of a lot of guests then, bed and breakfast. We decided we will have to do something else. So we started the Winkles. Aye, and, and that was in the garage, the, doing it in place. the garage. Then we moved down to the breakwater. And uh, from then on, God was, we could see God's hand from you. At the time you don't see it, but after he looked back. Mm -hmm. And we took a young lad in, his father was buying her in Frisora. He had been to the hotel, but he liked a good drink. <laughs> so his son stayed with us, and Mary just treated him the same. But there was a company in Spain came over to Ireland, and says, "Could you recommend anybody in Scotland to buy fish for us?" So we were recommended, mm. and we started putting fish to Spain. So what was 
White Link, which started in the, in the garage here in Glutton Place with the Winkles, and that was the start of White Link Seafoods. That was 1974. 1974. It was early 80s, we started putting fish to Spain. To Spain. So family grew, business grew, successful definitely. Where was the Lord in all this? Well, the Lord was, I think he was leading either way. Mary got away, she had a good memory, and she went away and learned Spanish. Mm -hmm. But when we had problems, we just commended to the Lord. Aye. And he was always there. Yep. So, you're grateful for your wife as well. She's been there with the business. Well, I always said the... she was the brains behind it. She, she was a friend. So does that I, mean I didn't hear the friends. You, 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 you did the work. I would be more <laughs> practical. No, but you've both done uh, put a lot into it, a uh, commitment time. Well, it was hard work because on a Saturday, oh when everybody was away home on a Saturday night, we were still working till about 11 o'clock on a Saturday night. Yep. But and I think I always look at it God doesn't have less lazy hands. Aye. And the families. It, it continued that but hard work uh, as well. If you commit everything to God, He looks after you. Amen. So, again, we're talking big moments. So there's, you know, we're having to go a lot of time span here, but I want to bring us to another moment. You know, we're speaking about the Lord looking after us. We need another miracle moment. You were a miracle boy and then you're the miracle man as well. That's um, right. An accident had happened that a, a lot of folk will kind of remember. It's a while, wee while ago now, but um, you were cutting the grass. We are sitting more and something happened. Can you take us through it? Well, what happened then was some of the bairns had... Um, I came for the word, but I'm not going to mention their names because they maybe get offended. <laughs> in all their, all their life. You know. Anyway, I had to stop the mower, but I left it running full speed to go to and pick up the object that was in the grass in front of me. But my sleeve catched my heavy jacket on the gear and it took off with me. And lost my balance and threw me about to the tree. And the next time I knew it, it was on the top of me. It could cut, it was one ton in weight, it could cut a metre and a half at a time, three blades. And, and right on top of then it, it never it happened. Everything got silent, but I couldn't get breath. I, I only realised later, for a blade that went through and underneath my belt, which squeezed it and stopped the engine. Yeah. Then I started to shout for help. Well, first, first help that I shouted, I had no breath, it was just help. Up, up. And I said, I'm, I'm not going to make it. They started shouting for help and there was no help coming. And I started shouting, Jesus, Jesus, send somebody, help me, help me. And I shouted out. And just a while after that, I seen feet coming through the grass. This was your wife, Jim Murray. Wow. Valerie. Your daughter. I always tell her, she's my angel. She was your angel. But she was speaking to Rachel on the phone at the time. And she says, be quiet. She says, there's somebody shouting for help. So she followed me doing and found me. And Rachel raised the alarms. And then there so was... It caused a bit of excitement for the night. I was, I remember arriving on the scene. And uh, the fire engine was there and now the fire team that was uh, they were waiting on a chopper to come to airlift you. That's right. And uh, a young guy, Matthew Noble, that... A kind of time, he'd, he'd came to the youth before, and he played football, and, I, and, and he, he saw me, and he says, it's snake no, it's no good, Ben, it's no good. And then, um, of course, the family was arguing about distraught, the chopper came, and uh, the report was that he had about a 2% chance of surviving. Mm. But you did. Well, I always remember him lifting the tractor, the tractor off the top of me. Right. And then the big knife, they lifted me with it because I was stuck to the belt. Aye. And they found the cut. And that's the thing to remember then. 
being wrapped up in the, the, the film with the Petronia, getting into the helicopter. I didn't mind nothing. Didn't mind that. And he was obviously cut up with the, with the blades and that, not to be grasped. No, still, and... a, still a big uh, hole here. Oh, it's healed, but it's, the flesh is out. Aye. And uh, this old boy, which followed him, my daughter, he held it up and she seen the bleed running. This was his bone. Aye. Two fractured hips, ruptured liver. And the... Uh, big traumatic well, experience. The, the doctor told Maria after, was waiting for a dead body. Aye. But the Lord had different... Different plans. Different things to say. For still work to do. What year was that in again, James? For that was in, I was 72 years old at the time. 1907. 16th April, 07. Wow. So, the Lord was looking after you again. The Lord was with me. I always remember when I got into hospital, I was being doped a bit with morphine and that. And there's an Irish nurse I got. She says, I'm sorry, we'll have to cut the clothes off you. I said, you just you cut away. <laughs> but I says, I have to be in Brussels next week and get me <laughs> out of here as quick as possible. <laughs> Little did I think, no, it would be seven weeks before I was out. Right. So, you recovered for that, obviously, it takes its, it takes its time, it takes its toll, and it, I guess it, wouldn't, it would have been a wee bit after that, but not too long after that, that he was diagnosed with the Parkinson's. Um, two years later. Two right. years later. So, you know, a lot of challenges and still, but yet, you're still praising the Lord and you're still well, loving the Lord. that's the thing. We just, we've never blamed the Lord for anything. But yeah. Mary said at the time, after the accident, she says, God doesn't allow this for nothing. She says, there's some good could he come out to it. Yes. And there's people who've been saved through it. Aye, and I mean, we'll, we'll hopefully some of the songs will be on uh, this. You, you produced this CD with we, we your story and that, and um, mm. with some of the songs, great songs you sing. Um, you know, we, we've, we've been, old Burns have, have been brought with it a bit as well. Um, the old account was settled long ago. Are, are these kind of great songs? And... But people have got in this, handed to them all over the world, really, haven't they? And there's some great yeah. stories about how folk came to faith through it. When well, those six saved in Los Angeles, gave their lives to a lot of whole In family. LA. See, you're, you're, you've made Hollywood. <laughs> oh, well, at least, at least my voice was. <laughs> but it's great, you know, to, and we keep hearing that kind of stories of how folk were, you know, they'd been through things as well and how much it meant to them. And as we say, even the best thing is fun when we hear that, you know, folk have, have heard and they've came to faith in the Lord. So, on that basis then, James, you know, we've just touched on um, some of the main moments, but if you were going to hear a main message or, or, you know, something that you would want the folk that's watching us at home, um, maybe they've been getting through things, maybe they're questioning about faith and is this, this real about the Lord? For a lifetime that you've had a faith and, and always being with the Lord and that he's taken you through, what would your message, I hope, be for when well, it's listening? I would say, without the Lord, I wouldn't have helped because I was born on the cross and he deemed me through everything. I maybe was a late learner, but I say, through life without the Lord, I, I, don't know, I, I don't know how they can survive. Mm -hmm. God's been so good to me, and my faith is stronger than a day. The hymn that I sung at uh, John's funeral was, I have a friend, a precious friend. Oh, how he loves me. Mm. He says his love will never end. Oh, how he loves me. Mm -hmm. But the next verse is, he walks with me, a long life's road. Oh, how he loves me. He carries every heavy load. Oh, how he loves me. Mm -hmm. He has a home prepared for me. With him, I'll spend eternity. Mm -hmm. oh, how he, oh, how he loves me. Um, hopefully, we can 
hear you sing that in, in just a moment, but when I think of oh, the five boys coming to the Lord at an early age and seeing the the faith that is filtered through to so many more in their in their families, you know, even when we're speaking about Barbara and uh, you know the coming from under corners side that you know there's a great heritage of faith. John Strachan, we've, we've said ah, about kings. Well, there's it's two things that struck me just, just lately. Uta Baker's boys, the daughter and John's daughters married to the pastor in Aberdeen. Mm-hmm. Uta, my side, which is humble, the, the pastor's married to my daughter mm-hmm. here. Aye. And which is lovely to see Aye, the two churches growing so big. Ah, that's good. And then Margaret's John Bina's John um, as well. The influence that he had as a as a as a leader in the church here and his family, and then Elsie's John 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 Tate as well. And fantastic to see um, Elsie coming here to the church now, and, and her family bringing her along and, and coming up That's and right. looking after her. And it's great to to see them and and get to know them as well. What a great heritage! But you know that message that you've got. That the Lord loves each person. You know who who's the next generation of oh, Beckett's boys. You know who's the next uh, group of friends to to come to Jesus like that and to to hear that faith for their lives. I'd love to see it happen, and I'd love to see people even respond today to fit they've heard. And if I'm sure you would say with my James, if there's anybody that's watching today that um, you know just needs to mark that step of faith towards the Lord. He's he loves you and he's waiting there for you. So hopefully now we can just enjoy James singing you've sung all your life. I've sung all life and the only t- I didn't like to entertain when I'm singing. I like to sing for the Lord. Mm-hmm. My aim is to see folks safe when I'm singing. Aye. Reflect I think on the glory to, to, to the Lord. So hey, enjoy this moment. Um almost eighty eight year old and is still using the gift that he's been given to serve the Lord and to hopefully touch other folks' lives. Thank you, James. Thank it's you. Been amazing. He, he, he carries every heavy load. That's why I've got the distance today. Thank you. A friend, a precious friend. Oh, how he loves me. He says his love will never end. Oh, how he loves me. with me along life's road Oh how he loves me He carries every heavy load Oh how he loves me Oh, how he loves me, oh, how he loves me, I know no 
but one I only cry Oh, how he loves me He has a hope prepared for me With him I'll spend eternity Oh, how he loves me Oh, how he loves me I know not why I only cry Oh, how he loves me Oh, how he loves me cry Oh how he loves me